Welcome back, I'm Sarah and this is your weekly witch fix. Today we'll be taking a look at Lifetime's television series The Witches of East End available on Netflix. The Witches of East End is a two series television show because it was cancelled as of 2014 but like I said it is available on Netflix and I've recently watched all of it. It's based on a series of books which you guessed it will be discussed in depth in a separate episode but the premise of the series is that Joanna Beauchamp played by Julia Ormond has been cursed with immortality which actually doesn't sound that bad until you get to the part where she's doomed to give birth to her two daughters Ingrid and Freya over and over again only to see them die horribly. This is because Joanna's father is the despotic leader of Asgard, where all witches come from, apparently. And Joanna attempted to end his reign of tyranny, which ended in her banishment to the human world. As law goes, it's at least original. The witchcraft in the show is much in the style of Charmed, the family setting of practical magic, and all married with names and monsters from Norse folklore. In their contemporary incarnation, Freya and Ingrid are for the first time ignorant of their witchy heritage, and Joanna believes that this time she can keep them safe. Unfortunately, in episode one, both girls discover their powers at the same time as a shape-shifting enemy gets Joanna accused of murder. Throughout the series, there are some flashbacks to previous lives in the 1920s, the coke-smuggling 70s and the 1800s. These are actually mostly well-costumed and set-designed, give or take a ridiculous fake moustache or twelve. It's basically the standard American supernatural series where hot people have both regular and supernatural problems and handle both with varying degrees of terrible decision making. Freya, for example, is torn between marrying Dash, her longtime sweetheart, and her sudden passion for his bad boy brother Killian. And yes, I felt my IQ plummet as I said that sentence. Also, who names one of their children Dash and the other Killian? Seems very odd to me. Ingrid, her sister meanwhile, is a librarian and so suffers from a serious case of the Hermione Grangers. She's bookish and a responsible partner to Frey's flighty and sexually liberated adventures. The first series is actually pretty reasonable, if a bit bogged down in the will they won't they Killian and Dash drama. Perhaps that's because all the Asgard nonsense is kept for the finale and series two. Season two, which takes a nosedive into Crazy Town with the arrival of a murderous monster and James Masters. Both of them are from Asgard. The monster, however, goes on to have a memorable, disturbing and very hentai-ish tentacle sex scene with Ingrid, which is at least very un Hermione Granger unless I read that devil's snare bit completely wrong. The special effects and acting are quite good, um, as it's quite a modern series, I would expect them to be anyway, but, but it's weathered well since 2014, four years ago. The dialogue can be a bit ropey at times and the pacing of the series is a bit slow in places, but otherwise it's quite an entertaining watch and it's good campy fun. Series 2 unfortunately ends on a cliffhanger and as of time of recording there seem to be no plans for Series 3 despite a frantic petition campaign by devoted fans, the show having of course been cancelled. This is a bit of a spoiler, but the end of series two was very frustrating for me because during a natty bit of time travel where they meet Freya's ex, Edgar Allan Poe, which is actually Killian in a past life with one of the aforementioned terrible fake moustaches, she remarks that she's seen pictures of Poe in books and he never looked like Killian then. And it's explained to her that because she and Killian are soulmates, she sees his soul as opposed to his actual physical appearance. So he will always look the same to her. That sounds like mushy rubbish, but okay, I'll go with it. But mere episodes later, Dash swaps bodies with Killian to avoid being sent to prison for a murder that he committed earlier in the season. And Freya doesn't notice at all. Soulmates be damned then. Aside from such odd laps in continuity and the fact that Freya slash Killian slash Dash, still not getting over him called Dash, the drama is given rather more airtime than it really deserves. It's, it's actually a fairly good series aside from that. There's a nice aesthetic to it in terms of the rituals performed in that they actually do rituals with candles and recognisable pagan symbols and tools. The house is very practical magic. The town is very kind of New England looking. It's very picturesque. What really charmed me into watching the whole lot of it on Netflix near enough in one week was Madshin Amick in the role of Joanna's reckless younger sister, Aunt Wendy. Wendy is cursed similarly with immortality, but also with infertility. She has a magic necklace that keeps track of the nine lives that she has been cursed to lead. And unsurprisingly, she can also turn into a cat. While Joanna is powerful and understated, rational and authoritative, 
Aunt Wendy is definitely given the best one-liners and the title of funnest aunt. The charm of Aunt Wendy's character and the feline beauty of the actress playing her make her one of my favourite television witches. She's basically Paige Halliwell and the ginger one from Practical Magic spliced together. I'll leave you with the quote from my favourite character, Aunt Wendy. And that is, magic is what you make of it. It can be dangerous and deadly or it can be mystical and beautiful. It's up to you. This has been your Witch Fix. Remember, you can get in touch at witchfixpodcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like, you can support the podcast by purchasing a copy of my own novel, Wayward, on Amazon for 99p. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I'll see you next week. Bye.